Most abusive husbands, they are narcissists. A man who believes that everything he do is right. This man believes everything about him is right. Everything he does is right. If he beats you, it is within his rights to beat you. If he decides to abuse you in whichever manner, it is within his rights to do what he wants to do with you. A narcissist doesn't see any good in a wife. Abuse from the eye of a woman. Now, despite the husband taking everything that is anything involving finances, he will go a notch higher and they will even take your children. In most cases, if not all, and I believe it is in all cases, when an abusive husband decides to take the children from you, it is not because he wants the children. It's not because he wants the best for the children. It's because he knows that this is one key point. If you want to hurt a wife, if you want to hurt a genuine wife, you take the children. So they will go a notch higher and tell you, even the children you cannot have, you're going to leave them. And later, like, look at it this way. Look at the women who men have taken their children from them. Number one, those children, wherever they are, they are being tortured. Wherever those children are, they are either being abused by even stepmothers, maybe the woman that the husband is living with. So in real sense, it's not like they are taking those children because they want them. They're just taking to hurt the wife because their mandate is to abuse this woman. The question is, do you understand the pain of a child the way a mother does? Because, because the pain of a child from the heart of a woman, from the heart of a mother, is beyond words, is beyond explaining, is beyond your thoughts. Because in real sense, if you want to hurt a woman, touch the child. And because the husband knows this, that is why they go to such extremes. Now they are not even taking everything that you have ever had. Now they will go and even take the children. We continue. Abuse from the eye of a woman. Did you know that there are genuine women who live or whom you believe that they live in a home? And true, they live in a home. And true, you know the location of the home. And yet this woman doesn't sleep at night. Do you know there are women who when during the day, of course, you're working, you're hustling, you're doing all what you need to do. Even if you're a housewife, you're working. Actually, house chores sometimes, I believe they are even worse than even office work. So the entire day you've been working, and when night falls come, you cannot even peace, peacefully sleep. Why do I say that? There are women that... When the night falls and the woman decides to go to sleep and they are in this abusive home or marriage, the husband will make sure that this wife doesn't sleep. The husband will make sure that this woman will not sleep. Either by shaking the bed, lighting all the lights, they even make sure there is a TV in that bedroom or there is a radio in that bedroom and lights are up and he will do everything possible to push this woman out of the bedroom so that she doesn't sleep. And the minute that woman decides to go and sleep, if that house has another room, he will come and break that door and tell him, go sleep in your bed, knowing very well she cannot sleep in that bed. So the only time this man will rest is when he sees this woman going to either the sitting room, sitting down on a chair, that is the time the husband will sleep. 
and there are cases whereby women have spent sleepless night for at most three days and that's why you will find most abused women they normally they have developed migraines because they no longer sleep at night and if they sleep they can even tell you in a week i've only slept for like five hours or six hours or eight hours or even sometimes go to work or go to some place or to our friends and they just sleep at the couch to just wake up later go home knowing very well they're not even going to sleep this is what i've been telling you abuse from the eye of a woman these are things that you will not hear anyone sit and tell you you will only know when people are filing for divorce and you start blaming them assuming them imagining telling all sorts of things that you knoweth not but this is what has been ailing women in the union of abusive marriages or in the hands of an abusive husband As we continue, you realize, because this is worth mentioning, by where we, are, we have reached now, you realize that the self-esteem of this woman has completely been ruined. This woman has no self-esteem anymore. This woman has been enslaved. An abused wife has it's like even psychologically mentally her mind has been captured has been enslaved she has no self-esteem anymore she does not even know who she is everything she sets to do she does not even believe when she does something right whether it is right and why do i say that most abusive husbands they are narcissists in my own words, who is a narcissist? A man who believes that everything he do is right. This man believes everything about him is right. Everything he does is right. If he beats you, it is within his rights to beat you. If he decides to abuse you in whichever manner, it is within his rights to do what he wants to do with you. A narcissist doesn't see any good in a wife. And that is why I was saying most narcissists, they actually capitalize on Proverbs 31 wife. And despite the wife, the genuine wife, attempting even to become, to perfect the art of Proverbs 31. In the eyes of a narcissist, it is still enough. Because in an eye of a narcissist, nothing is enough. So this husband will continue torturing you and battering you and making you feel useless everything you do is your fault you find a wife that is married to a narcissist the wife keeps on apologizing even for nothing you apologize for for mistakes that he has done you apologize uh, you apologize even when he has erred you apologize even when you have not erred and when he errors, you have errored. So you need to apologize. Abuse from the eye of a woman. Do I need to say how that woman feels from the heart? You have lived apologizing for crimes you have not committed. You have lived to apologize even when your husband cheats. It is your mistake. When he brings another woman in your house, it is your mistake. When he beats you, it is your mistake. When he, he ceases to provide for the family, it is your mistake. When he comes home drunk, it is your mistake. Even when there is an outbreak of corona, it is your mistake. That is the mind of a narcissist. And that is the abuse from the eye of a woman. Let us go to gaslight. 
gaslighting. In my own words, a gaslighter makes a wife even doubt their own sanity. Gaslighters thrive on lying. Have you ever been told a lie to an extreme you believe a lie, knowing very well it is a lie? This is a gaslighter. A gaslighter makes a, a genuine wife believe you have become mad. A gaslighter is also the kind of a husband who will consistently con in continuously, let me say continuous motion, abuse the wife, calling her names like you're mad. They are trying to play with the mind of this woman to an extent that the woman will start questioning her sanity. The husband will know very well this and this particular thing did not happen. And he will push it to the wife and tell her, you did that. You cannot remember. You did it. And the wife can clearly remember, I did not break a plate. When I was washing the dishes, I didn't, I didn't break your favorite cup. But this husband has broken the cup. And now he's saying, it is you who broke when you're washing the dishes. And the wife can remember very well, I don't break cups. I've never, it, even if the cups break, I've not broken a cup the whole of this year. But a gaslighter, he will thrive in lies and convince you every evil thing that he's doing, you're doing. And convince you, you, are, you have even been to places where you have never been. And convince you that anything that has, is broken in that house, it is you who has broken it. And convince you that you said some, a particular thing which you did not say. And you know beyond any reasonable doubt. I did not say this thing, but a gaslight. You have said it. And it is the gospel truth. And it is final. So this woman married to a gaslighter will wind up doubting her sanity, will wind up questioning herself. Her self-esteem begins to go down, to demean. You, you do not even believe yourself. Sometimes you are, you are so cautious, almost to, to the extent of starting to record yourself when you are talking, so that you are not told that you said this yet you did not say abuse from the eye of a woman. In one word, I will differ with women who say if you are married to an, an, to an abusive husband, and I'm talking because there is an abusive husband and I will say they are extremely abusive husbands. I will say if you're married to, let me put it the way I feel it is correct to say. When you're married to an extremely abusive husband, in few words, it is not you have been through hell the way women say, I've been through hell. No, it is you have been living in hell itself. You have been married to Lucifer himself. The way we have always in our history or in our culture, in our learning, trying to define hell and Lucifer. Yes, they are genuine wives who have been living in hell, married to Lucifer. This is a genuine fact. I'm not trying to give phrases. I'm trying to tell you facts. That genuine women genuine married wives are going through in the confinement of the union of abusive marriage and they cannot be able to talk about it they can't they can't and there is something i need to mention in still in the brackets of a cheating husband let me tell you the repercussions of a cheating husband. You will find that the cheating husbands that we are addressing now, maybe they are ministers in the church 
and some of them are not even ministers pastors bishops and stuff like that hierarchy prophetic or uh, hierarchy um spiritual men of god no, let, let me not say men of god ministers who have been ordained and now they are married to wives who are pastors wives or even women who have senior titles in the church let me put it that way and because these two parties are members of a particular even big churches and the husband has been cheating and there are laws and rules and regulations in this church because you as a wife you hold a particular church i'll not mention those positions you hold a particular position in the church even if your husband is cheating even if your union of marriage is 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 um, it is hell on earth you cannot leave the union of your marriage because number one, if you decide to quit your marriage as a wife you need to relinquish your, your your position in the church you need to return the certificate and you need to return the cloth that you are being given in the church and now as a wife this is the only thing that gives you peace this is the only thing that gives you satisfaction or at least tries to raise your self esteem and now you know the minute you decide um I'm filing for divorce or separation or I've decided to just walk out and go. These are the repercussions. So what do these women do? And I will still call them genuine wives. What do they will they do? They will choose to remain in the abusive marriage. In this marriage where the husband disappears and only appears on Sunday morning so that we can hold hands and go to the church and prove to the congregations we are still a couple yet very well the wife knows even the wife he has a second wife and he has even children he has hired outside but guess what some 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 of the of this um genuine women who do not have the strength to continue normally do and i told you everything we are speaking here today they are not stories they are not so i will keep reminding you telling you these are not stories what will these women do they will either sink into drunkenness these are women who can take strong drinks and not even be drunk because how they drown their sorrow is in drinking and let me tell you even if they drink on saturday night till morning on sunday they will be sober and they will conduct praise and worship in the church these are the women who now in some cases where i have been given some few um evidences these are some of the women who have decided because even i am not being satisfied at home they have gotten some boys out there and they will go because we cannot they, we cannot divorce we cannot separate so me as a woman what will i do i'm not supposed to talk about it i'm not supposed to talk about it at all so me as a woman what do i do so they will wind up doing all these things and on sunday they will still conduct praise and worship they will still lead people to in prayers and even those who are supposed to be preaching they will preach but the question is when the society finds out about this particular women what do they do they shun them they abuse them they insult them you know how to shift blame very well yes i'm not condoning what is being done but the question is have you gone to the root cause of the problem i said in this channel let us resolve what has been ailing the union of the marriage now do you know why some of these things are happening instead of you pointing fingers in the church those people yeah they are calling themselves christians look what they are doing the question is those who are doing because in the church not everybody is sinning those who are doing have you ever tried to create a moment to understand why this woman has resorted to what she is or what she's doing knowing very well 
if you have lived with that particular woman, the track record, this one has been a very good woman. So why a shift all of a sudden? So before we remove the rug or the speck in their eyes, have we even tried to find out what is happening? Oh, maybe they have the speck. We are seeing the speck. Have we tried to locate where the, the log is? But we are very fast, very quick to judge. And being judgmental is not resolving any problem. Because being judgmental, has it resolved what is ailing the union of marriages? This woman has already been ensnared. This woman has already been enslaved. There is no outing option in the union of this marriage. The same way this husband is enjoying out there. The same way this husband has found a way to relieve his stresses and continue with his life. What, where is it written that the woman should not also continue with her life? And even that one who wants to continue with her life genuinely and correctly is not supposed to do so. Rules, regulations, which in real sense, because I told you we are going to be reading the Bible, you will clearly confirm that most of these rules are not even in the Bible. And these are the same women who will wake up and decide, I am done with church. I am done with the Bible. Because the God of the Bible, he is very unjust. But as we have been reading the Bible, is that so? It is not so. It is not correct. It has always been a lie from the pits of hell to continue destroying the union of marriage. Yeah? So this is abuse from the eye of a woman. Abuse from the eye of a woman comes to a point where they completely feel enslaved, ensnared, bound, that there is no outing option anymore that it is over now with their lives. So now, some will opt the best way they know how to survive and to be able not to die because there is either you, you sink into depression and diseases and die or you get out and get to endure the insult, the abuse, the condemnations, sometimes even threats or you take the other wrong route. Or well, the same way, the, or the, same, the same thing the husband is doing, the wife decides to do. Because I've been told I can't get, live out of my marriage. So it is, um, it is it cat and mouse, cat and mouse game in this union of marriage. As long as you can't catch me, as long as you can't catch me, then life continues. That's why I've been saying in this channel, no more hypocrisy, no more pretense. Just because you did not know, because people are not talking or telling you what is ailing the union of marriage doesn't mean that there is nothing that is not, that is not happening, that is not causing this pain and havoc in the union of marriage. It has been there. It is there. And now it needs to come out so that it can get healed. So that healing can be found. This wound has to be exposed so that it heals. It has to be exposed. Because the devil likes thriving in secrecy, in darkness. No more for him. No more darkness. No more. It has to come out so that healing can take place. Abuse from the eye of a woman. We continue now. Police stations. When, a, when an abused woman, and in most cases women who go to the police station are physically abused, meaning they are going with bruises, they are going with broken arms, broken legs, um, swollen faces, eyes, you know, their hair has been pulled out. They are bleeding. There is actual evidence of abuse. And before this woman decides to gather courage to run to the police station, it is not that she has been abused that day for the first time. No. 
This has been a continuous abuse, continuous thing that now she has been abused one year, two years or three years or four years or even ten years. Some women even got gather their courage even after 15 or 18 or 20 years to run to the police station. But guess what? When this woman finally gathers courage to run to the police station to report, what happens? I will guide you a few, a few things that happen. I pray to God that from last year they are not happening because I've been to the police station and I've seen a great change. But I will tell you what has been happening. Before, or maybe even currently to some people, we wouldn't know. But these are actual real life stories that have happened. You go to the police station, you have been physically abused. Sentiments like matters between two, leave them alone. This can shock you, especially when it, it is coming from a mouth of a female police officer. A female police officer. That you know we have been seeing these cases. And every time we try to help these women, eventually they will still go back to these abusive husbands. So, we, these matters of two people, are you sure you want us to file this case? Or we are, just, we are not just going to file it and then you withdraw it? So we are not going to waste our time or resources dealing with matters of two people. So this genuine woman who has finally gathered courage to run to a police station to try and get help and then she is told these things, what does she do? She goes back to the same home, house. It's no longer a home. She goes back to the same house and continue being abused. In some cases, actually, even the police officers normally say, can we call him, we reconcile you too. Those are things that happen. Can we call your husband and we just reconcile to you too. And in most cases, this, these police officers do not understand that. This is something that has been ongoing, that after many years, this is the time this woman has gathered courage to run to the police station. Let's go a notch higher. At the police station. This woman arrives at the police station. And she's dealing with a husband who has money. And now you can tell money can either be from his side or even from this woman he's abusing. And the most painful part is when he's actually using the money that the wife is generating to torment this woman. So he will go and bribe this policeman and tell them, don't take over this case. In the, this is a matter between two people. Or even if the case is grievous, he will go and tell them, just let it die down. So when you as a woman, when you go to this police station, you're not going to get any help. Let me go a notch higher. There are cases where some police officers have even been paid to terrorize this wife. To tell her, whatever you are trying to do, we can even arrest you and, ja and, and, and take you to court and accuse you with something. And in real sense, this wife doesn't have anything to be accused of. But now threats have started flowing because these people have been given money to terrorize this woman to either drop the charges. Because if charges are grievous and when they go to court, they know this woman will win. So these are things that will start happening from the level of the police station. Sometimes, even when you know offices that can help you, even within the police station, they will tell you, you will not get justice. According to your case, we are not seeing it proceeding, proceeding even to court. They will even tell you, you do not have any, any strong evidence to support your case to court. 
And if you have strong evidence to support your case in court, this evidence will be destroyed. Then you'll have nothing as a wife. And guess what? You have been persevering for so many years. This is the last strength that you are engaging now to try and save yourself. And where you rent for salvation, it was not forthcoming. Let us go a notch higher. We are still discussing abuse from the eye of a woman. You have managed to record a statement in the police station. The police officers have greatly assisted you. Yes, you have been able now to build up a case in a way that you can be able now to report and the case proceeding can start in courts. Now, from the police station, you have been able to get a lawyer. And in most cases, these abused women, they do not have finances or the money to help them in court in the court system. So in most cases, they try to get pro bonos or they try to get from organizations that have been funding women. Whichever case, or even some few who are able to raise funds to proceed to court. So now, the court system begins. What happened? The abusive husband will approach every lawyer that tries to handle your case. There are cases where, let's take for instance, a divorce case. The first lawyer you get was compromised by your husband. The second lawyer was compromised. The third. And in some cases, there are good lawyers who will tell you, I've been approached and you are, I've been given this amount. So I'm advising you to take up another lawyer. Not knowing you as an abused wife. That even the other lawyer you take up as they're handing over, this lawyer will tell him, so he will also want to get money and hand you over again to somebody else. And now it becomes a joke. And the, when this thing is happening, remember your case is just, is not taking off. It's just delaying. In most cases, now when it comes to lawyers, it turns up to be the highest bidder. Who can give more money is whom you're going to serve well. So you've already approached a lawyer. He has taken up your case. And you realize, of course, they never get, most of them will never get to tell you what's going on. But you will start noticing because actually he's not working for your interest. He's delaying. The explanation he's giving you is not making sense. So you start believing, oh, there's something not right here and there. And by the end of the day, you start feeling, hearing things like you're not, you need to top up the money. You need to increase the money. The amount of money he's asking you is crazy. And by the time now you are reaching there, he's already compromised. He's already been paid from the other side. So his work is to try and create stumbling blocks to delay so that the other side can know that the money is working. So it's about the high speed. So in some cases... You might wind up even saying the judiciary, the judge, the, the case, cases are delaying in court. Yes, yet the delay started from the lawyers. Then leave the lawyers. You have managed to get a good lawyer who has taken up your case, even in some cases pro bono, and they are actually helping. There are some few cases I have had even judges have been compromised, especially in the lower, in the lower, in the lower, in the, in the, in the lower offices. That sometimes you hear, even when the case is being decided, all the evidence is, is there. Every backup is there. But how that ruling has been done is questionable. But so much so, the match that is out there and especially in line with the divorce proceeding 
most of the delays are happening from the level of lawyers before even the the court and the judge gets to know what is going on every delay every lie every trick to delay and stop this case is from the level of the of the of the lawyers abuse from the eye of a woman and kindly remember that as these things i'm talking about are going on this wife has a heart this woman has a heart this woman has reached this level as a result of abuse, extreme abuse. You do not get to the levels of filing for divorce or going to court to get help or uh, restraining order to restrain your abusive husband to even come near you because it is a petty thing. In most cases, this is a matter of life and death. Most of this divorce proceedings simply because women are not talking about they are in, in short or in one in a few words. They are running away from death. Because we said here we are telling the truth as it is and from the heart. From the heart. From the eyes out there. It's a divorce proceeding. But from the truth of the heart of this woman. I'm running away from death. Because they can clearly even see the angel of death awaiting. It is not a laughing matter. It is not a subject of discussion. It is not a joke. It is not you being paid to look for mistakes so that you can continue destroying this woman. Now, abuse has come from the house. is going to the government now. It is not enough of what this husband is doing to the wife. Now the abuse has gone to, to another level of engaging government offices to destroy this woman. But let me say something because sometimes I like giving credit where it's due. I've been in the court system from last year and I've seen a great change. I've been to the police station, I've seen a great change. I've been to DCI and mostly let me point out DCI Central Nairobi and I have seen tremendous change. There's a time I would see a police officer and I would shake and tremble. Yet I've not committed any crime. But I believed that you can be arrested, that you can be taken to court, and you can even be jailed for doing nothing. Abuse from the eye of a woman, from the heart. So it's not about the divorce. These women. These great strong women have just been snatched from the jaws of death. But in the eyes of the world and public, it is a divorce. And it's still in the process of that divorce, there are even women out there that when a woman starts speaking and telling the truth, you will call her bitter. That when this woman starts telling you, you do not know what is happening. That you will tell her to shut up. You will tell her, you will start giving her threats. And telling her she's not even worth touching a Bible. Because she's the greatest sinner. Because she has filed for divorce. Why is it written in the Bible? That even in the society, this woman, this genuine woman, continues to be abused even by the society. By the way they look at you. By the way they start addressing you. By the way you are banned from attending particular functions, especially religious. You're no longer fit to hold a position because you're a divorced woman. You're not shining a golden ring to prove 
you are qualified because you are Mrs. So and so. Hypocrisy of the highest order. You are shining a golden finger, a ring. You are showing out there you are Mrs. So and so. Yet, even in the house, you are not sleeping together. Now, let me say this again. You are holding hands on Sunday morning in church, leading a particular ministry as Mrs. Pastor and Pastor himself. Yet in real sense, you're not even married. It is public marriage. But in real sense, even you as the wife, if rapture was to happen today, you'd go straight to hell. Not because you are evil, because of the bitterness you carry. The unforgiveness and resentment you carry towards your husband, which you cannot be able even to speak it out. You cannot speak it out. It's a taboo to speak it out. So you stomach all the hurting. You stomach all the beating. You stomach all the insults. You stomach all the cheating. You stomach all the abuse. But you have to wear a plastic face on Sunday morning. And we are still taking people to heaven. And we are still believing we are going to heaven. Hypocrisy of the highest level. How are we going to heal the union of marriage if this is what we have been living in? And you cannot talk about it because it is the gospel truth. It is the truth which is not supposed to be heard because it is a taboo. But you want to heal the union of marriage. How can we heal what is ailing the union of marriage in hypocrisy, in lying, in pretense? How will it happen? How will it happen? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, the truth, define truth, the truth and the life. If you are a follower of Jesus Christ, the truth. If you are the follower of the truth, are you truth yourself? In the union of marriage, are you truth? Time to call yourself. I always say, call yourself for a meeting as I myself and alone. Am I truth to myself? When I wear a golden ring, am I truth to myself? When I'm lying out there, I'm Mrs. So-and-so. Am I, I am, am I truth myself? If I was to close my eyes and die today, am I guaranteed as a Christian, I am making it to heaven? Am I truth to myself? Or will I open my eyes in the gate and I'm told, I do not know you, not because you are evil, not because you are bad, but the bitterness you carry, the pain you carry, the unforgiveness. Why unforgiveness? Because you forgave your husband day one, he repeated. You forgave him again, he repeated. You forgave him again. You, you, you have not even been permitted to pour it out to begin even to heal. So what did you do? You stomached, you stomached, you stomached and decided, that's it. I can never forgive him. But I'm still born again. I'm done. But you cannot talk about it. Because it is written, you are going to lose everything. So because I don't have an outing option, let me now put a plastic face. Let me now become a hypocrite. Because in one sense, you don't, in real sense, you don't need to say I'm a liar. I'm a liar because I've been a hypocrite. Because who is a hypocrite? One who is never telling the truth. But I'm trying to put on a face to show you this is who I am. And in real sense, this is not what I am. My life is a lie. I've been living a lie. But I have to live this lie because in my religion, in my doctrine, in my position, in the role that I hold, if I, if I decide I'm walking out of my marriage or filing for divorce today, 
I will lo- I stand to lose so much as a wife. I stood to I stand to be accused. I stand to be abused. I stand to be insulted, to be threatened. My journey going forth will not be okay, will not be easy. Because I've lived to hear from other women who have attempted. So I have chosen the simpler way to live a lie. So going forward, we have to bring out this, this, that which has been ailing marriages. And if we are going to bring it out, we are bringing it out with the truth from the heart, not from the mouth, not from the lips, from the heart. This is what has been ailing marriages. This is the abuse from the eye of a woman. This is what it means when you hear that woman was abused. She has been living in a marriage full of abuse. And now you know there is extreme abuse. And now you know when a woman wakes up to file for divorce, when a woman wakes up to file for separation, when a woman wakes up and just disappears, takes her children and gets out of the house and goes and never looks back. That's a very strong woman. That's a very tough woman. That is a woman who just escaped death. So it's no longer about what you call it. It's no longer about what you say about it or what you think or what your assumptions are because you've never found yourself in some situations. This is a woman running for her life and the life of her children. This is the abuse from the eye of a woman. This is the abuse from the eye of a genuine wife. This is what abuse is. from the eye of a genuine wife. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching us. Thank you also for joining. And I hope as we continue, we will learn more. We will unveil more. And in the process of unveiling, We will start, those who are not serious will get serious. Those who are in the union of marriage and were not serious will now begin to understand the seriousness of what they have been doing or what they have been planning or what they want with life. As we continue, I want this wound to come out and begin to heal. There has to be cure in this union of marriage. And we cannot cure a wound that we are trying to hide. Because if we continue hiding it, it will continue being, it will continue spreading and becoming bad. We need to treat it. And we can only treat that which we know. So we need to bring this wound out and now treat it and after we treat it now we need to heal and that's why now we will need to go now to another topic of healing of forgiveness thank you very much and may the almighty God richly bless you Continue subscribing, new subscribers, welcome aboard. Thank you for subscribing. Kindly click the bell so that you continue watching the continuous teachings. Kindly also like and share. Kindly also, I would love to read your comments. I appreciate it so much. 
and let us journey together as we learn. And it is indeed my prayer that genuine marriages will be healed, will be cured. There are marriages also that need to be rescued and saved. They will be rescued and saved. And also rescued and saved meaning that those marriages will be restored. Rescued and saved that there are some marriages that they just need to part ways because they were not. This was not an original plan of God. And God can connect them with their destiny, with their genuine partners. Because I believe no, we were not created to be single. And for those who are called to be single can be single. But those who are created, in, from Genesis we learned God created man and woman. So they will, even those who feel that they made a mistake and they have walked out from the union of marriage, there is hope. You can still get married, you can still be happy. You can still settle. There is no sin. I believe there is no sin God cannot forgive. There is only one sin in the Bible of abusing the spirit of God. Yes, but if you made a mistake because you made a wrong choice because you did not consult God, you repent and God moves you now into your place of blessing. And I believe there is a place of blessing for each and every one of us. So don't give up. Don't give up as a lady, as a, as a woman. Don't give up as a wife. Don't believe the lies that have been told in the past that your life is over, that you are nothing, that you'll amount to nothing, that now when you come out from the union of marriage, your life is over. Don't believe those lies from the pits of hell. And as we continue studying the scriptures, you will see it come alive. So I strongly believe that by uncovering this wound, now it needs to start healing. And the healing process has begun. So God bless you. Until next time. Thank you.